I'm very happy to see a full house here today. Christian, this is probably due to the fact that this is your fourth presentation already. The third, I think it's the third time of a webinar, but once you did two presentations in one. So you get more famous with the minute. And um, we are very, very happy that you um, made the way from Geneva again to Basel to present to us today. The work of the Clinical Data Semantic Interoperability Working Group, which you chair. Christian is a professor of clinical informatics from the University of Geneva and head of the Medical Information and Sciences Division of the Geneva University Hospital. And um, as I said, thank you very much for coming again, Christian. We are very much looking forward to your talk. Dear Catherine, uh, thank you very much for uh, the invitation. I uh, uh, always come with pleasure in uh, Basel. So I will uh, present you a little bit the Clinical Data Semantic Interoperability Working Group from uh, the SPHN. It's one of the many working group. Uh, you, you can find all these working group on uh, the website of the, of the SPHN and the DCC at the, the, the SCB. And the, one of these working group uh, is the Clinical Data Semantic Interoperability Working Group. This working group, they are really important uh, for the work of the, of the SPHN and the DCC. Um, they, um, it, has, it took uh, some time to, to make them work, at least uh, for the semantic working group. Here you have the members of the working group, Marcus Obreiter from Basel, he is in the room. Thank you, Marcus, for the work. Cornelia Krischel from uh, West Zed, Jean-Louis Rezaro at uh, Before uh, Jean-Louis, it was uh, Nicolas Rosa. Matthias Kempf from Inselspital, David Cavin from HUG, and Jörg Bloyer from EL Suisse. There are many other people. Christophe, Cathy, Perrault, Miriam. Uh, Miriam is here also in the room. Uh, Sabine is also here. I, I would like to thank all the people uh, from the working group for their work since uh, 18 months. Uh, it, has a, it is a huge work to be in one of these working group. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit difficult for uh, everybody in SPHN to uh, really see how much work it is to, to work um, towards this uh, project in order to make it work. So the goal of the semantic um, interoperability working group is really to build this uh, interoperable framework between the care system. The care system is the data provider, the real data provider, the research community, which is uh, more or less the data user, and the private sector, which is uh, partly data user, partly uh, data provider also. But uh, so it's really building this, um, this convergence and this interoperability. As you could see in the member of the working group, there is EL Suisse. EL Suisse is uh, this uh, federal uh, coordination organ between uh, the Bundesamt für Gesundheit, BAG, OFSP, and the cantons in Switzerland. Uh, to uh, promote the development of the shared patient record in Switzerland. It is a work that started many years ago that uh, ended up in 2017 with the federal law for the shared patient record in Switzerland that, in, that uh, put in place and forces a lot of uh, important stuff. Among them, the fact that we have in Switzerland a global license for SNOMED. We have also uh, the, the federal uh, offices like uh, BFS and BAG using uh, LoInc and SNOMED for their uh, interoperable uh, approaches, which is also extremely important. Just for remember you, to remember you, SNOMED is not uh, um, well, Germany or France don't have global licenses for SNOMED. Um, 
and uh, they haven't been able today in both of these countries to move towards the use of law ink. Uh, and I want to remember you that in the US or in the UK or in Sweden, law ink and SNOMED are standards, mandatory standards. So it's not that we are so late in this process. And one of the important aspects of not being so late in this process is that the care system and the politician and the governing part of the care system have promoted the use of some of these standards, such as SNOMED and LOINC. It's important not to forget that. So in uh, the semantic working group, as you could see uh, from the very beginning, I come back uh, fastly, we have to advise on clinical data interoperability standards, data formats, and exchange formalism to be adopted, which is important, which means that we are working mostly on semantics to uh, build up the definition, the understanding from a really uh, strong semantical point of view. But we have been advising all the SPHN about description formalism and data models to really separate clearly the semantics on one side, the description formalism in the middle for st transport and storage, and at the end of the loop, so to say, data models for exchange and analytics, and really trying to fight the idea to use data models at the semantical level or at the transport and storage level. So a little bit of history. The members have been invited in this working group in April last year. A kickoff meeting was uh, end of May last year. The strategy paper in summer last year. The first data set has been uh, released in October last year. So you can see that it's a recent story. It's not a working group that is working since 20 years. It's uh, it's born uh, a year ago, more or less. And um, if you think that uh, we are at our, our uh, third or fourth data set release uh, today, uh, and uh, we have been, uh, we have uh, all together uh, probably the capacity to cover uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of different variables in a very strong semantic manner if you take the lab um, into account, it's not so bad. And building this interoperability is a real challenge because I apologize for the French here, uh, but it's part of the interoperability. Um, we have to try to put together many different approaches, many different vision all of you that work in, uh, who work in hospitals, they understand what it means, the problems of putting together the information from various parts of a hospital or a hospital or a care uh, providing uh, organization. Uh, it's, and we have to put it together also in this uh, complex situation where we have to uh, organize a convergence between the care system and the research community. So I just want to uh, remind you also that all the data acquired in the care system, hospitals and SPITEX and uh, well, all the care systems, Niedergelassene Ärzte and so on and so, is strongly driven since 1995 by the uh, law uh, which is defining the reimbursement of costs in, in the care system, the KVG in German, the LAMAL in French, uh, which completely changed the, the landscape of data production and data acquisition, data encoding in Switzerland. In, in this, since 95 and now, it has totally changed the landscape. The care system is waiting more than 80 billion Swiss francs a year, every year. We speak about 80 billion a year. 
So you can compare 80 billion a year and 70 million for four years. It gives you an idea of the difference of the weight of the care system compared to the research in SPHM. You can also uh, compare the budget of our university hospitals, which is for all of them around 1.5 and 2 billion a year, and our large universities. It means that um, basically we have a, a care system that is uh, uh, really waiting way, way, way more than the research community. And uh, we have to find a way to uh, make these two uh, communities work together uh, in, in such a way that it is a win-win process. And it's always uh, difficult because these are a lot orthogonal visions. And uh, using uh, diagnose coded in ICD-10 to, uh, as we say in the care system, to optimize uh, reimbursement and DRG, or using the same codes to do uh, clinical research, it, it's not completely the same. So this is a one challenge. Another challenge is, of course, how can we today design a system that will be used and useful in 15 years or in 10 years? And uh, it's, it's one of the problems we have with cohorts, for example. How can we today make sure that the data we acquire today to ask the question and the hypothesis we are uh, asking today, they are still valid in 10 years. And uh, it's a, an important uh, question. And, for, I, I, and maybe just for this point, uh, we are uh, caring of, uh, about uh, several uh, large cohorts. And uh, most, most of the big questions that were asked 15 years ago in this cohort they are no more valid today because drugs have changed, disease have changed, everything has changed in the last 15 years. So in this working group, there is, there is some principles that have born. It's not that we have met in the kickoff meeting, May 2018, and Pada, there were principles. They are born at, so to say, during the work. And this principle is that we have to, to have an approach which is pragmatic because we need to deliver. And need to deliver means that uh, at some point it has to be pragmatic, it has to be feasible. So we know that for many of the things we do, uh, uh, it's not perfect, but it's feasible. It's implementable. We know that we can go in hospitals, we will have data. It's implementable, it's feasible. But it also has to be sustainable. And sustainability, especially in the data world, is an important problem. Um, in my job as a, at, at the HUG, I have been living several data migration and system migration. There is always a lot of uh, loss when we do this migration, migration. And we have to try to build something where we build sustainability. And it's an important uh, aspect. And finally, we have to be independent from data models. It has to be completely agnostic from any data models. There are hundreds of data models that are used in the care system and healthcare in the healthcare environment. You probably have heard about OMOP. Uh, there are many other. I2B2 is a data model, HL7 as a data model, CDISC as a data model. There are hundreds of data models. Each of these data models is excellent for a specific purpose and not good for many other purposes. Data models are dedicated to, uh, um, to some purposes and we, we need to be able to support many different purposes. So among the other principles, we must, must focus we on semantics. We want to be independent from all the rest, especially transport, storage, and analytics. When possible, we want to use 
existing standards. Are they national or international? But existing standards, just because the data with where we are working with, they come from data providers, data sources, that are providing these data since long time. And if these data providers, they have uh, developed IT systems, clinical information systems, educated, uh, if I just take the university hospitals in Switzerland, 15 to 20,000 nurses to actually do the data acquisition in a certain way, using a certain standard like Nanda, for example, there is no way to change this in a snap. So how do we work? Basically, uh, there is this working group, uh, the extended working group with the other people I named. Um, we work, we are contacting the driver project. They are responsible, the driver project, also to contact us and to present us their needs. How to present us their needs, these needs, is basically to build a kind of code book, a list of all the variables, all the data set of the information they need to do, to run their driver project. So there are many ways to be, build a code book. There are many ways to build this list of variables. Uh, however, uh, and there are no good ways to do it. There are different ways to do it. So we, we basically don't care really about the way it's built. We care about the fact that it's as uh, complete as possible, that it is in a way that we can use it because it's digitalized, and that we can work together with the driver project to make clear the understanding, the meaning of each of these variables. Once this is done, we will uh, try to generalize this. I will give you some example. Then it will be put in a release, it will be published, and there will be a feedback, constant feedback from the groups and the driver's project and the researchers. So what does it mean generalized? So if we, if we take the first wave of the driver's project, there were hundreds and hundreds of lab needs. So at some point, you can take all of these things and have one line per lab, and it will give you hundreds, thousands of lines of labs. At some point, you can say, OK, there are different groups of labs. There is kind of the normal lab, I would say, uh, that can be represented in a normal way. There is some specifics lab, like microbiology and, infects and uh, virology and such type of lab. There are other type of labs, like histology and cytology and so on. But we can try to build group of lab. And in one group of these lab, there is the usual uh, Chem chemistry that can be done in the lab, like what is done in the emergency room or in, in, a, in a normal lab, the hematology and such type of things. And we decided to go along this line for a first block. This first group is uh, identified with LOINC, so you have to have a group of people working on that. You have to make sure that it is compliant with the machines, the manufacturer, everything which is the pre-analytical and analytical phase in the hospitals. It is compliant with the regu regulation. Uh, you have to get the codes for these things. You have to make sure that all hospitals agree with these codes, that they are compliant with the machine they use, the automat they use, the kit they use in each hospital, the batch of the kit of the automat they use. At some point, you have to validate it. Uh, internally with a manufacturer, and then there is a, a society, a Swiss scientific society for laboratory medicine, which is the FRMH, and it has to this society has to endorse this um, this uh, mapping, and finally you can put it in a release, and it can be released, and at once you have uh, one thousand two hundred something like that 
lab that is available in the data set, but that, is, that has made all the process of being validated by the labs, by the FI mash, by, by all the instances. So as you can see, uh, making this is not just sitting in a room with a, a coffee and a croissant and deciding how to do things. It's a process, and this process can be complicated because it involves care, the care system, hospitals, production in hospitals, real patient, real data, and uh, a lot of uh, certification processes and regulatory processes from the uh, organization that do produce the data. Well, anyway, to uh, make this process work, each driver project has to have a delegate for the semantic interoperability. Well, it can be two person, whatever, but there must be a designated person in charge of doing this or responsible of this. And this person will be the project representative. The driver project representative will be the person who will be mostly in contact with the clinical semantic working group. In the clinical semantic uh, working group, for each driver project, we will have a representative who is responsible for the semantics and the interoperability for this driver project. So that it is clear who we will have to contact in each driver project. And for each driver project, it is clear who they have to contact in our working group. And this is a mandatory process. It's also the responsibility of the driver project to contact us to make sure that this person has been designated. And it's much easier for the driver project to do it than for us. Because the driver project are complicated projects with many different actors, many PIs and co-PIs and people involved in the projects. And it's not easy to, for us to know who is delegated as responsible for the semantics. This is the responsibility of the driver project, and they have to do it. So what is the, the working group delivering? We are delivering uh, several groups of things. One group uh, of things is the references. These are coding systems, simple scores, value sets, such type of things. If you go on the website, you will find more and more direct links to get access to ICD-10, the good version of ICD-10, the last version of the LOINC mapping files. But you will also find links for all previous versions that have been used in the datasets. Because we need to make sure that the history and the historization of the definition of the semantic of each code is preserved on a sustainable way. You will find, of, of course, also the data set themselves. There are different types of data sets. Uh, we are still discussing which type we need, we don't need. It's basically a, a data set is just a bag. Uh, and it's not so important. They are mostly built to uh, ease the work of everybody. Maybe one is enough. Maybe we will need several ones. It's not clear. Don't think this is important. It's just, as you know, there are people, they want to have everything separated in a little small box. Other people, they prefer to have everything in a one big bag box. It depends a little bit on uh, the way you like things. It's we have already tried different approaches. It's not clear. I am not sure that it will stay like this. So this is a, an example of what we keep for the reference coding systems. These are the information we keep, the name, the short name, the provider, the version we speak about, and all the links that are required to download this thing. And it's important. I will give, just give you an, an example of that. 
what was the meaning of the code ICD-10 B33.4 in August 99? August 99, it's exactly 20 years ago from now. So what was the meaning of this code in August 1991? So the meaning of this code was no meaning because the B33.4, which is a pulmonary syndrome, antivirus cardiopulmonary syndrome, it's something important, but it has been added in 2006. So if anybody does a study about cardiopulmonary syndrome due to this type of virus, they should know that it has started to exist in 2006. And these are things that are important when you start to use this type of coding. So I already spoke about the fact that we work on an incremental process. Uh, I will go a little bit more in the details. One, the pro re representative and the CSC representative have been uh, defined. Each driver project will come up with the variables and they will have to prioritize their va variables in three groups, A, B, C. So what is the meaning of A, what is the meaning of B, and what is the meaning of C? It's there is no meaning of A and B and C. The only meaning of A, B, and C is to make clear to the driver project that they are in charge of prioritizing the variables, not we are, they are. So they have to have a first group of something like 50 to 100 variables which are their A variables. And it is the variables they want us to put at first in the work uh, pipeline to be processed for the data set. Because there are projects, they come up with 800 variables. So it's not possible for us, as you have seen, we are not uh, that much people. We have to also to do this in addition to the rest of our activities. It's if with a few exceptions, nobody, none of us is really paid to do that uh, full time. So uh, it's a work we do in addition to the rest of what we do. So we have to prioritize things so that we can actually process the work. And this prioritization is required and it can only be done by driver project. So the driver project have to prioritize the first priority, the second priority, the third priority. And we don't really care which type of arguments they take as long as they come up with three equilibrated groups of variables so that we can process them in the right order. If they don't do this prioritization, we will just do it ourselves the way we, we want and it will surely not be the one the driver project wants. So we will review these things. We will finalize and uh, work on the variables in such a way that they can be released on our quarterly release. Every three months, we try to do a release uh, if, if there is enough to do. And then the, the the data set will be available for everybody and there will be room for everybody to send us uh, feedback until the next release. So that, of course, the earlier the better. If the feedbacks come, come up two days before the next release, so it will be too late. So by now we have received very few feedback about the previous release. So uh, I think uh, it's, it would be better to send feedback to us. There is plenty of tools on internet, on the website to send us feedback. It's really, it, it's really hard for anybody to say that it's hard to send us feedback. The people who have difficulties sending us feedback, I think they cho so choose another job as doing research in health sciences. So, uh, because th if there is no feedback, there will be little uh, effect on inputs of the feedback. So an important aspect is um, to, to clarify 
about our job is that we are doing the semantic mapping. So if we take uh, something like the hemoglobin, uh, we can uh, actually clarify the fact that we, we, we want to make sure what is hemoglobin and how to represent hemoglobin. Now, at some point, the hemoglobin is something we measure in a patient, in a location, at a certain date, at a certain time, for a certain purpose, uh, and so on. This has nothing to do with the semantic. It doesn't change the meaning of hemoglobin. It changes the interpretation of the result of hemoglobin, but not the meaning of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is hemoglobin. And the same with penicillin. Penicillin is penicillin. It has nothing to do with prescribing penicillin, with how much penicillin you prescribe, to whom you prescribe it, or whatever. You can be allergic to penicillin. You can speak about the properties of penicillin on the membrane of a bacteria. You can speak about penicillin when you speak about logistics. You can speak about penicillin about the color of penicillin. You can speak about a lot of stuff about penicillin. It has nothing to do, penicillin has nothing to do with a prescription. Penicillin is penicillin. Then this penicillin is used in a context. And maybe this context is a prescription. So I already, already to talked about this. We are really working on trying to sell this idea that we need these three pillars, a clear semantics, clarifying the meanings, which I just tried to do, to, to do now with uh, penicillin, for example, a descriptive formal language to transport, and then models, many different models that will, be, will have to be used according to which project uh, people work on, to, with, with whom in the world, uh, in which community uh, or pharma or, or, or which, uh, which, which, whichever uh, regulate, regulatory organization. So what, uh, what will come up um, see, this year is a new uh, updated strategy document, a user guide, because it looks like uh, more and more uh, a user guide is needed to use a data set also for us. Um, some slides, kind of uh, the, the short version of the user guide, the thing uh, you, you have when you buy an iPhone, where you can use your iPhone in two seconds, not in two months of teaching. Uh, improve the management of references. We have discovered, uh, thanks to the people at DCC, that it's not always so easy. There are many uh, sources that we were used to use, such as ATC, where in fact you have to pay licenses, and uh, everybody was using these uh, sources without a uh, proper license and uh, without taking care about the fact that there is a licensing model behind this uh, classification. Uh, of course, when it gets more official, uh, uh, it, it, we have to respect the law about these things. Um, the data sets themselves, they are more and more going to be in the direction of uh, graph representation and uh, strongly uh, semantic driven. And uh, currently, all the driver project, more or less all the driver project should have been contacted or uh, will be contacted uh, if there are some that have not yet been contacted. And I think it's done. I thank you very much for your uh, attention and open to questions. Uh, thank you very much, Christian. With this, I open the floor in the auditorium here. If there are any questions? Catherine has a question. Thank you, Christian, for your presentation. <laughs> um, 
Maybe to break the ice, I think there are questions, um, but um, maybe it's not so easy to express them. So to break the ice, I would like to um, play to you some of the questions I frequently hear. For example, there is, um, there is the question, when does this semantic data set come into play? So how do we have to imagine this? So the hospitals, when they give data from their clinical data warehouses to research projects, where in this process would they put the data into the format we basically tell them to use? At some point, you have the semantics that should be extremely clear and completely, well, not completely, but separated from the semantics, independently from the semantics, you have the production of the data. And when you want to transfer data or store data, represent data, you have this realization of the data. It now exists. At some point, when we speak about semantics, we speak about, uh, we speak about penicillin. It's something like concept. It's a dragon. The dragon is an animal uh, who is flying and uh, he's uh, burning everything and blah, 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 blah. It's a dragon. We are speaking about dragon. And suddenly, the dragon exists. It's Games of Thrones. It's a patient. He's in a bed. He's a bed in a bed and he has uh, atrial fibrillation and he has blah, blah, blah. And he's in this hospital. And it's today. It's... Uh, August 12th, and uh, it's uh, 1638, and so on. It's a realization. It exists in reality. So, in, when hospitals do transfer data, they have to put together these two things. It's exactly like uh, the, the light. Is it uh, a wave? Is it uh, not a wave? At some point, it exists into reality. It gets reali reality. And this realization, this realization into reality, it is the convergence of a semantic representation and the existence of something in the reality where you use the semantic representation to represent this thing in the reality. And then it exists. So we design something that can represent hemoglobin, hemoglobin, this hemoglobin can be used in a lab to measure something. It can be used for many other purposes. It's hemoglobin. And at some point, you measure it in a patient. And then you will say this hemoglobin, in this context, it has a patient, it has a, a sample, it has a time, it has a location, it has a lot of stuff. And then you can put these things together. And then it exists. And then it, it is transferred either biomed IT using a, should use a descriptive formalism like RDF, or in a tool to do feasibility studies like Clinerion or others. So this is uh, when the things get into reality. And I think one of the problems is that the people, they expect to see in the semantic something like the pathology, the route, the time, the hospital, the patient ID. No. The patient ID is a concept. The penicillin is a concept. The patient is a concept. The route is a concept. And at some point, you will put the patient, the concept penicillin with the concept patient, with the concept today, with the concept in this hospital, together to build a concept which is allergy. But it's not that it exists before. You see what I mean? It's exactly the sentence. The tense sentence which I just said now, it, it didn't exist before. But all the words 
that were needed to build this sentence, they existed before. So I just composed this sentence with existing words. So we have on some, at some place the definition of the words, at some place a grammar, a way of formalism, a, a, a descriptive formalism, and at some place with the, the words and the formalism, we can build the sentence. Yeah? Is there another question? Thank you. Is, it, is this on? It's on. It is on. You don't hear it over the last bit. Okay. Ah, okay. So it's just for the. Yeah. It, uh, it's basically a follow up question, or very similar to the previous one. I just had a brief look on the data set you released, and there is a column saying uh, semantic value. And it contains a lot of as available in hospital. So my question would be, how is this interoperable? Well, this is something different. First, it's wrong. It will be not more the case in the next, next data set. But basically, one of the characteristics is that one of the errors which is in this data set is that the formal definition of things have been mixed with the, the fact that these things are available or not. Because as usual, we are in this um, delicate situation where on one side, we have the, a, a kind of a approach that wants to be extremely coherent and pure. And the other, on the other side, we have a, a, a need, which is the need of the researcher that is very pragmatic. And now we want the data today, maintenant. And at those, on the third side, we have the data provider that says, yes, but these data, we don't have this data. We, we, don't, we just don't have this data. We don't have the deaf status of our patient. We know if they are living because they are in the hospital. We know if they died in the hospital. But if they are not in the hospital and we don't know they died, we don't know their death status. It's maybe yes, maybe not. We don't know. So we don't know. How can you answer to death status as a Boolean? You cannot. So there is an impossibility to, to answer that. So this is why in, in many situations, this as available was kind of built to try to get uh, something to answer a place where uh, there is no, in, there is no, um, there is no solution to, to, the, to the question. But we, I think we um, already, well, we already decided that this will disappear in the next data set and replaced by value set and availability, which is different. But okay. it is a good remark. Uh, are there other questions in the room? Because I see there's a question online. I'm reading it out. So someone asks, what is the difference between a composed variable and two variables linked together? Today, what we have, well, it's a always, it's a, uh, also, uh, it's also a very good question, first. Second, I would say that the data set history as you have seen it all of you the 2018 one the 2019 one and the 2019 two they are imperfect what they reflect is a understanding process of the people working around the data set towards a strong 
subject predicate object representation, which is model independent. It's not completely trivial to get to that. So, fundamentally, there is no data type, there is no um, atomic or composed concept. There are only concepts connected to concept. And the composition is nothing different than the production of a more complex graph where you um, open the nodes of the graph as long as you can open it. And it's probably always possible to open more a node. But when we started, we started with variables. And then we started with connected variables. We continued with connected variables. Then with dependent variables. And then we migrated to composed variables. Because what the idea is to finish with concepts, where any concept can be used to build another concept as part of a concept. So a completely compositional approach. So the re this is a good question. And the answer is not so good because what, the, what we can see today in the files is, is really an, the process of the understanding of what is the difference between a variables and a model versus a concept and an ontology. I'm looking around here in the auditorium. I have someone here. Tos has a question. Yeah, you mentioned the SNOMED CT in the beginning. So will this now be um, applied systematically to uh, the semantics as well, or is that a, a different issue? So it, it is probably possible to map uh, more or less systematically um, a lot of things with Nomad City. I'm not sure that it does make sense. Uh, as far as possible, the various concepts we are speaking about and using, they will be mapped to appropriate representation. What is an appropriate representation? Snowmed City is probably not always appropriate, but it is probably appropriate in many situations, just because there is no alternative to Snowmed City. Now, most people, they use Snowmed City as a coding system, which means they have no idea how to use Snowmed City. The Snowmed City is not a coding system. Most people, they just look a word in the dictionary of Snowmed City and they search for word mapping, match. They don't use the inheritance properties of Snowmed and they don't use the compositional properties of Snowmed. So I would say that we are not, uh, except a very few people, in a position where we have the competence and the uh, working force to map properly, systematically, manually, SNOMED with these things. And there is no electronic tool that is actually able to do it properly. It's possible to map it as a coding system, but not to map it as a compositional system. And if you do, uh, it's exactly, it's a, it's a, in fact, mapping anything with SNOMED is the same, absolutely the same 
scientific problem as automatic translation. And it's a complex problem. So we have another question here in the room and I see one online. First, the one here in the auditorium. So another question that we hear a lot is, why don't you just use fire? So, um, I don't understand the question. So I think the people who ask this question, they first have to understand what is fire, what is HL7, what are the models behind fire, what type of interoperability fire is building, for which purpose fire is working, and then uh, I will be happy to discuss with them. But um, I, I, I don't think that, um, I don't understand the appropriateness of the question. So we leave it at that. And there's another question online from Vera Yaki. She says, Sally Christian, thank you very much for your presentation. A question about Lark Lab. It con consists of the international LOINC code and the additional manufacturer automata kits added by each laboratory in the hospitals. Will there be a numeric string addition to the LOINC international code for each type of manufacturer automata kits? Question mark. It's a good question. There are a lot of discussion today with, uh, also with the work that has been done uh, in Switzerland. And thanks to this work with the FDA and several large manufacturers to <coughs> try to find a solution in order to have the, this uh, triplet manufacturer kit and uh, automat and kit, manufacturer automat kit, uh, because they, clar they define the pre-analytical and the analytical phase. And this pre-analytical and analytical phase is in fact what is coding uh, LOINC. So for the same uh, lab with different pre-analytical phase, you will have different codes. So there is no way to have one code for the same lab except if we have all the pre-analytical phase that are absolutely similar. How to address exactly this? One solution would be that the manufacturer, they put their code directly into their kits, so that when uh, the measurements are done, the kits provide the values, the results, and the appropriate loin code, which is uh, what has been discussed also and in this situation, the question which is currently uh, in discussion, but I am not part of this discussion, is to know, is to define who would be the regulatory agency that would be in charge of validating this code. And what if there is IP protection about the pre-analytical pre phase, which would be kind of released with the coding of the analy analysis. Thank you, Christian. Is there another question in the auditorium? We have still three or four minutes left. There is another one. Thank you. Just a brief question. You mentioned at the beginning that there are orthogonal views on like research perspective and accounting perspective for the um, semantics and interoperability. Uh, and, uh, do you plan to have some caveat or some warning towards uh, one of these views, how to use the data set? Well, I, I would not say that it's uh, orthogonal between accounting and research. I would say that it's like orthogonal, it's often orthogonal between the care system and the research community. Because the, the, there is a pressure on the care system, which is uh, high, uh, 
towards uh, lowering uh, costs. And the, one, of the, one of the costs of the care system today, at, at least in the inpatient systems, is the data acquisition. And uh, the, f the university hospitals, they are filling uh, a lot of uh, more than 150 uh, registries just for their accreditation processes. And all of these registries, they have basically, the, they speak about the same patient. It's always the same patient. ICU and you know, always the same patient, but with completely different understanding of the data. So you have one patient is producing one data set, you have one team working around this patient who is producing one data set, and you have to fulfill hundreds of different um, documentation of this same thing. So today it will be difficult to increase this. We have to improve this, to improve this, the efficiency of this. And uh, it's a little bit, today it's a little bit orthogonal because what I see in the hospital setting is that the hospital settings are looking at decreasing the administrative load of the clinicians, nurses, physicians, and so on, because they spend a lot of time. You have seen many studies have been published, including in Switzerland, in Zurich, and in Basel, in Lausanne, of the amount of hours a day a nurse, a physician is spending on a computer just documenting. So it represents a significant part of the time spent by people. Whereas in the research community, there is a strong push to increase the amount of documentation, to have systematic documentation, uh, including for things that are not necessarily at the first glance pertinent for the case, and so on, so on, so on. So uh, actually, it's, um, we have to find ways to, to, uh, to decrease the time which is required by clinician to document, because it's, uh, it's not good that the people, they have to spend a quarter of the, or, or third of their total time documenting case, rather than taking care of case. And at the same time, we have to try to increase the data that are available for research. The solution is not just like this. So thank you very much. Um, I think I saw there were quite some questions online, the record partic participation online, also in the room here. So probably the proof for a very interesting subject. With this, I will call it a day. Thank you very much, Christian, for this other great presentation. And uh, have a nice afternoon. See you soon. Thank you very much. Merci.